In this video, I'm going to make an M file. Now, an M file is a file that contains some code that's basically the same kind of code that you want to run. Um, a script M file is the simplest kind of M file, and there's not really anything you can do in a script file that I know of that you can't do in the terminal. Uh, this part right here is called the terminal. I don't think I've actually said that yet. Um, but a lot of times it's a whole lot more convenient to write a script instead of having to type the same thing over and over and over again. So FreeMat has its own text editor for writing M files. Uh, MATLAB also has its own text editor. Uh, Octave does not, however, so you want to use an out a different text editor to edit M files for Octave. I personally use Pluma, which is the default text editor with Mate uh, for Linux Linux Mint with Mate, and uh, it's it works just well enough. Um, so. Uh, also, I forgot to mention, if, if you don't like the text editor and you're, and you're using Windows, there are plenty of different text editors that you can get, code editors, and even Notepad will work, but you'll probably want something a little bit more advanced than that. Now, for now, I'm going to go ahead and close this and talk about something slightly different. Now, to run an M file, your working directory has to be, the ha your working directory in FreeMat has to be the same as the directory uh, that the M file that you want to run is in. So right up here, this tells you what directory you're currently in, um, and these has has recent directories, and you can select what directory you want to go to here. And this over here on the left side tells you what M files are, or what all files I should say, not just M files, all files that are in the current directory. Now if you're using Octave, you have to do this through the command line strictly because you don't have a. Uh, if you use Qt Octave, there is an interface for that. But if you're just using the regular Octave, you'll there are a few things that you want to know. First of all, pwd means print working directory. It tells you what directory you're in. Uh, basically, the same commands that you use for Linux bash terminal commands are the commands that you would use in FreeMAT or Octave. I think. I don't know if it's Linux bash commands, but at least some of these, I think DOS commands work in MATLAB uh, if you're using Windows. And uh, if you want to change directories, you do CD period period. That will go up a directory. So that takes me to Home Android Dropbox. And PWD tells me I'm in Home Android Dropbox. If I want to go back into M files, I'll do CD M files. And PWD is put in the M files directory. Uh, by default, FreeMAT and Octave both put you in directories that I don't think are convenient. So uh, it's good to know how to change directories. Now that's how you navigate. Oh, one more thing that I forgot to mention. Um, and this is again applies for Octave. If you want to list out what fi what files are in the current working directory, ls does that. There are also additional options for ls, but I won't go into those here. So this just uh, list every file in the directory, and you can see that, that I'm in an M file um, uh, directory. So that is all you need to know for going to the right directory. Now I'll go ahead and go to an M file, create an M file, and um, what I'm going to do here is test how effective the how just how unitary you might say the Q in QR factorization is. So what I'm going to do first is create a random complex valued matrix, um, square matrix. So A is a random 5 by 5 plus A times a random 5 by 5. Oh, I need to go ahead and save the M file. I'm going to save this as qrtest.m. And now this is in the is in the correct directory. It's in the same working directory that I'm in right here. So I can go ahead and do QR test, and it gives me a. This is my random five by five complex valued matrix. Now I don't want to see every single step for this M file, so I'm going to go ahead and put a semicolon at the end of that line so I can hide the output. So that just means you want to do QR test. It just hides the output. Also, when you do QR test, you don't want to do .m. That'll give you an error. You just want to do QR test. 
but the actual file itself does need to have .m. So uh, that file, that piece of code just gives me a random five by five complex valued matrix. But now I want to do qr qra. I also don't want to see the result right there. So that just means now I have. You could oh you could also see the variables that it's creating over here. I have q, a, and r. But what I want to do now is take a look at q times q adjoint, and the reason why is because qr factorization. Q should be unitary, which means that um, the adjoint of Q is also the the um, inverse of Q, which means that Q times Q adjoint should be the same thing as the identity matrix. There's a similar when we talk about real valued matrices or something similar when the transpose is the uh, orthogonal. Uh, when, you're, when you're talking about real valued matrices. Um, a unitary matrix is the complex uh, parallel, you might say, not parallel, but um, is this unitary matrix is very similar to orthogonal matrix, where uh, A times A transpose is the identity. For complex value, it's Q times Q adjoint will give you the identity. So if this QR factorization is exactly perfect, then this Q times Q adjoint should give me the identity matrix. So QR test, well, it, it, it's kind of the identity matrix, but there's something not quite right about it. You see this negative right here, that's because this is actually, it's very, very close to zero, but it's not quite. So let's go ahead and say that this is going to be equal to uh, X. I don't think I have an X, okay, I don't have an X anywhere here, so X is Q times Q transpose. Now I'm going to say y is equal to the actual 5 by 5 identity minus x. So now I'm going to go ahead and do qr test. Now this should be 0. So if I, because these should be the same thing. If this is, should be the identity, and this is the identity, then when you subtract these two off, we should get the same thing. So why aren't we? Well, notice that this is really, really, really close because this whole matrix has the scalar of 1 times 10 to the negative 16. So this is really, really close to 0. But the reason why it's not 0 is because we're dealing in finite arithmetic. That means that all the values that we deal with are truncated at some point. Now this is probably what's called double precision. Um, I'm pretty sure it's double precision, which means that you have 64 bits but a lot of these numbers that we're going to be dealing with have to be cut off at some point. They can't fit into 64 bits. So that means that we're, we're dealing with, with, uh, fi with uh, imperfect arithmetic. Now, that means that if we were doing this in Mathematica or Maxima, we would have perfect, um, perf we would have exactly the identity matrix to do this. But that's so much slower compared to FreeMAT and Octave and MATLAB. That's why uh, MATLAB and Octave and FreeMAT are used so much more often in the industrial world because they're so much faster. So that means that we have to deal with what kind of error are we going to be having. That's a big part of numerical analysis is what kind of error are we going to be having. It sounds like I just got email based on the sounds that I'm hearing from my phone and my tablet. So that gives us, let's, let's go ahead and see what's the norm of this right here. So QR test, well that's a really small number. 1.27 times 10 to the negative 15, so that's really close to zero. So that's why we are, um, uh, that's why we're basically okay with the fact that, well, you know what, this is not exactly the identity matrix, but it's so close to it that we're okay with it. So that's something that's that's really uh, that that's a, a big important part of of uh, numerical analysis is knowing that we're pretty close to being we're, we're very very close to being the right answer. Now let's see what happens whenever I do this QR test again. Well, that's not the same number, is it? So let's do QR test. It keeps giving me different numbers. So why is that? Because this generates a new random matrix 
every time I run this code. Um, so A is go is different every time. But if I take that out and put it in here, so now I have one A and this is not changing. So it's going to be giving me the same number every time. But for now I'm going to go ahead and put that back in there. Uh, that's just good to keep in mind uh, you know what's what's in your m file and what's not in your m file. In fact, a lot of times I like to have everything that I can in the m file. In fact, sometimes I like to have a clear at the beginning of my m file just so that I don't get any other variables that are in the way. But uh, I'll go ahead and put the clear in there now. It doesn't hurt anything. Um, now one more thing is comments. I'm going to get rid of that in there. Um, sometimes we have code. Uh, this what we have right here is not a very long, complicated piece of code. But sometimes we have code that's long and it's got all kinds of really difficult things. And if we want to figure out, if we want to edit it later, and we want to, we don't want to have to to go through every single line and figure out what does this line do, what does this line do. So that means whenever we're writing it, we want to put in a comment. So that means like, so this right here, this is a comment. And I put in a comment by putting in a, uh, um, sorry to say parentheses, that's not right, uh, percentage sign. Everything after the percentage sign is ignored by free matter, octave. So that means no matter what comment you put in, it's not going to affect what free mat does. So like, here I say, well, this creates a random uh, complex valued matrix. And I run QR tests, doesn't change the way the program runs. This performs the QR factorization of matrix A. Does not affect the way it does it. So that means we can put any kind of comment that we want to it. This is pretty important whenever we get some complicated um, functions um, that we don't want to, or complicated scripts or M files that we don't want to take all the time to uh, to reread everything every single time we want to, to edit it. Okay, that concludes this particular video. Uh, next we're going to be talking about function M files. This was a script M file, next we'll do function M files.